Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the first of a three-part series on taming the beast known as Xcode. The series will be broken down into three distinct sections. In the first video here, I'm going to go over what has confused me a lot, and that's window and document tabs, along with editors, and how they all fit together. I'll provide you with some tips for keeping your hands on the keyboard and still being able to navigate your way around. The second video will focus on some more keyboard shortcuts that you should commit to memory, along with ways to organize and manage your files within the Project Navigator. And then for the third video, we'll concentrate on mastering the document editor. This video is sponsored by App Figures. App Figures makes tracking the business side of your apps like downloads and revenue a breeze, while also helping you to grow your downloads with very intuitive tools for App Store optimization and for competitive intelligence. And it's not just the tools. Ariel from App Figures shares guides, tutorials, and even hosts live streams to teach you how to promote your app. I also recommend checking out his YouTube channel for weekly news about apps. App Figures helps you spend less time tracking and more time developing. Sign up with my code, Stuart3030, to get 30% off your first three months. Links are in the description below. Thanks again to App Figures for sponsoring this video. Now this is by no means a comprehensive and all-inclusive guide. My goals here are to help you speed up your development, reduce hand-to-mouse interactions, and make your code easier to maintain. Xcode's UI can be overwhelming and it takes practice and repetition to remember and master some of the keyboard shortcuts and techniques that we'll be going over. I suggest that you bookmark these videos and return to them often. Watch and practice even just one or two of the concepts introduced if they are new to you until your hands develop keyboard memory. I didn't say it would be easy, but I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the advantage of learning some simple techniques. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. The first thing that you'll need to do if you want to tame Xcode is to understand the difference in relationship between window and document tabs and editors. And the best way to do this is to work from the bottom up in terms of hierarchy, although that's a little difficult to do because it's the chicken and the egg kind of dilemma. You can't have one without the other. Or if you're going to work effectively with Xcode, you'll need all three of these objects, though you may not even be aware of this. It's even more difficult to explain in words. So let's take a look at how these pieces all fit together. What I have here is an Xcode project where I've used the Command plus W to close off all items in that center pane. When you tap on a file in the Project Navigator, it creates a temporary document tab, and it reveals the code inside the center pane, which is known as the editor. And each time you tap on a new file in the Project Navigator, it replaces the document tab in that center editor with that file. Now there's ever only one temporary document in an editor, and you know it's a temporary one because the name is in italics in the tab. I'll get more into this in another video, but you can use the Shift plus Command plus O to search for and locate a file to replace that temporary document as well. Well, you can pin a temporary document to the editor in a couple of different ways. You can double click on a file in the Project Navigator and that'll replace the temporary document with a pinned one. And then the next time you click on a file, it'll create a new temporary document to the right of that selected one. If you work on a temporary document, making an edit, that document then will be converted to a pinned one. And then the next click again will create a new temporary document tab to the right. You can rearrange tabs by dragging and dropping them. But if you rearrange a temporary document tab, it too will be converted to a pinned one. Once more, tapping again on the Project Navigator creates a new temporary one to the right of the selected one. Now, as you become more attached to your keyboard, you'll want to avoid unnecessary movements to the mouse so that you can use keyboard commands to cycle through the different documents within an editor pane. The command right brace moves to the right and the command left brace, or curly bracket if you like, moves it to the left. 
And that's the same as Command, Shift, Square Brackets, right or left. Now, when we started, we had no editors open. And now we have one editor with four document tabs. And it's possible to have more than one editor displayed. So we can create a new editor window by doing a few different ways. If only one editor is open, option clicking on any file in the project navigator will create a new editor to the right. Subsequent option clicks on files in the navigator will alternate between editors, replacing the selected document in that particular editor. When you're within an editor using the command curly bracket navigation, it will always be within that selected editor. You can create additional editors using the keyboard command, Control command t And this will create a new editor directly to the right of the selected editor. And it will also use the selected document for that editor. And then subsequent option clicks on files in the navigator will cycle between all open editors replacing the selected document in that editor. Now by default, new documents, temporary or pinned, are always added to the editor that is currently in focus. However, you may choose to open a document in a specific editor or create a new one. You can specify the location of a new editor using the Shift option and then click on a document in the Project Navigator. And this will allow you to choose the document that you wish to replace in any of your open editors. Alternatively, you can use the Shift Option Click and create a new one in a specified location. And that can be either before or after, or between, horizontally or vertically, or above or below. When you release the mouse, the new editor will be added at that location. And then you can use Control back tick to move between editors. Command W will close a document in an editor. And then once all documents are closed in that editor, the next Command W will close the editor as well. Documents can be moved between editors by dragging and dropping them between the editors. And you can have the same document open in two different editors to view different sections of that document at the same time. And this is perfect for having a reference to one piece of code in a long document, but still be able to edit a different section. A window tab is what Xcode 11 and before simply called a tab. It displays the whole project window interface. Well, we can create multiple window tabs, and each one is distinct. Thus, one window tab might show a project navigator, while another might have the project navigator hidden, or display a different one entirely. In other words, a window tab is like a second window on the same project, except that it doesn't occupy any independent real estate. Rather, it shares the space within an existing project window. Now, before you take advantage of a Windows tab, you'll need to display the Window Tab Bar. And to do that, from the View menu, choose Show Window Tab Bar. And the title of the Window Tab will be the Currently Selected Document tab. That's not too helpful. We'll change that in a second. You can create another Window Tab by choosing the Window Tab from the File menu. Or as you see here, you can also use Command T to create a new one. And that gets created to the right of the selected one. And a new window tab is simply a duplication of the current window tab, including all document tabs and editors. When you have more than one tab open, you can tap the plus button on the right of the window tab bar to create another one. Now, Command Vertical Bar or Command Shift Backslash will show all window tabs, and you can create a new one from here as well. Each window tab is completely independent, and you can add, remove, or arrange document tabs as you wish, and even change navigators, like I'm doing here to focus on source control. 
In this case, then, it's convenient to rename this window tab because the default displays the name of a selected or focused document that's not even here anymore. So I'm going to name this window tab by choosing Option Shift Command T to bring up the Rename Editor, and I can just call it Source Control. Control Tab, if you recall, moves us between editors. Control Shift Tab will take us through all open window tabs. But remember, you can always use the Shift Command backslash to show all window tabs so that you can click on it if you want to use your mouse. Now the key to efficiency is trying to remember the keyboard shortcut commands, and that just takes practice. There are some, however, that you should learn immediately. And the first one I want to introduce you to is the Open Quickly. Using Shift-Command-O will bring up a fuzzy search box. And then when you start to type, it'll list all available files in the filter. And when you reach the one that you want, simply tap Return. And this will create or replace a temporary document if it doesn't already exist as a tab, or it'll open a tab if it does. With multiple editors open, you have limited screen space. So you can temporarily collapse all other editors and focus on the one with the selected document. So shift Control, Command, and then the Return key will set the focus on the current document within the current editor. And with that open, then, you can move between the documents in that editor as before using the commands that we described previously to move between these documents. Now, as you move between documents, you often need to return to recent ones because you just moved quickly to check something out, and I want to get back to where I left off. Control 2 will bring up a list of previously visited documents that you've accessed. And you can select one from here. And this will break up your history into a previous section now and a next section because you're in the middle of something. So Control 3 will bring up a list of documents visited after the one that you just went back to. Does that sound confusing? Yeah, it does to me, so I don't use that very often. What I often find easier to do is to move quickly back and forth in my history simply using the control command left arrow to move backwards in my history. And once I've moved backwards, I can return by using control command right arrow to move forwards to get back to where I was. Now remember, we're still in focus mode, so shift control command enter will revert to showing all editors in that Windows tab. Now that's a lot to digest here in one sitting. So you need to practice. So I'm going to stop the video here. In the next video, we'll look at more keyboard shortcuts and see how we can manage the Project Navigator more effectively and focus more on the current editor.